Jana Balaba Girivada Dari Girivada Dari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jana Ranjana Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kunjabi Hari Kunjabi Hari Hari Pejana Bala Bagiri Vada Dari Pejana Bala Bagiri Vada Dari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Shoda Nandana Braja Jana Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nama Hare Nama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Hare Nam Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava, Punja Bihari. Jaya Radha Madhava, Punja Jaya Radha Madhava, Punja Bihari. Thank you, welcome to Guru. Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Prabhupada Ashtarta Shri Srimad, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Prabhupada Ashtarta Shri Srimad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai, Nama Charya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Iskhan Founder Charya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Prem Sekaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasa Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopana Shamakun Radhakun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Yamuna Mai Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Grant Trashimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, All Glories to Assemble Devotees. All glories to assemble devotees. All glories to assemble devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Narayana Namaskritya. Naram Chaiva Narottamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam. Tato Jaya Murdeya. Nasta Preyu Badreshu. Nityam Bhagavati Sevaya Bhagavat Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna and good morning. We'll be reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, Chapter 1, Text 40. If you could repeat after me. Yama Dutta Vacho Veda Pranihito Dharmo He Dharmas Tad Viparya Yaha Vedo Narayanaha Sakshad Swayambur Iti Shushruma Yamaduta Vuchu Veda Pranihito Dharma Hiya Dharma Stad Viparyaha Vedo Narayana Shakshad Swayambur iti shushruma Yamaduta vochu Veda pranihito dharma Hiya dharma stad viparyaya Vedo narayana sakshat Swayambur iti shushruma Yamaduta vuchu Veda pranihito dharma Hiya dharma stad viparyaya Vedo narayana sakshat Swayam boriti shushruma Yamaduta uchuhu 
Vero pranihito dharma. Vedo narayana sakshat. Swayam bhuri to shushrama. Yamaduta uchuhu. Vedo pranihito dharma. He dharma stad viparya. Swayam bhuri to shushrama. Yamaduta uchu. Veda pranihito dharma. Vedo Narayana Sakshat Swayam Bori Tishushuma Anyone else, Tyler? Yamaduta Uchuhu Veda Pranito Dharma Heya Dharma Star Viparyaya Vedo Narayana Sakshad Swayam Bori Tishushuma Anyone else? Okay. Yamaduta Uchuhu The order carriers of Yamaraj said Veda by the four Vedas Sama Yajur Rig and Artvart Artavar Panihitaha Prescribed Dharmaha Religious Principles He indeed a Dharmaha Irreligious Principles Tadviparyaha The opposite of that that which is not supported by Vedic injunctions. Vedaha, the Vedas, books of knowledge, Narayana Sakshat, directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead, being the words of Narayana, Swayambuhu, self-born, self-sufficient, appearing only from the breath of Narayan, and not being learned from anyone else. Not being from anyone else. Iti, thus, thus. Shushruma, Shushruma, we have heard. We have heard. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The Yamadutas replied, that which is prescribed in the Vedas constitutes Dharma, the religious principles, and the opposite of that is irreligion. The Vedas are directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, and are self-born. This is what, this is, this, this we have heard from Yamaraj, purport. The servants of Yamaraj replied quite properly. They did not manufacture principles of religion or irreligion. Instead, they explained what they have heard from the authority, Yamaraj. Mahajano yena gatasa pantaha. One should follow the Mahajan, the authorized person. Yamaraj is one of the twelve authorities. Therefore, the servants of Yamaraj, the Yamadutas, replied with perfect clarity when they said, Shushuma, we have heard. The members of modern Civilization manufactured defective religious principles through speculative concoction. This is not Dharma. They do not know what is Dharma and what is Adharma. Therefore, as stated in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma Projeto Kaitavotra, Dharma not supported by the Vedas is rejected from Srimad Bhagavat Dharma. Bhagavad Dharma comprises only that which is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhagavad Dharma is Sarva Dharman Parityaja Mam Ekam Sharanam Vraja. One must accept the authority of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and surrender to Him 
and whatever he says. That is dharma. Arjuna, for example, thinking that violence was a dharma, was declining to fight, but Krishna urged him to fight. Arjuna abided by the orders of Krishna, and therefore he is actually a dharmi, because the order of Krishna is dharma. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 1515, Vedascha aham eva vedaha. The real purpose of Veda, knowledge, is to know me. One who knows Krishna perfectly is liberated, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 4.9. Janma karma chame devyam evam yoviti tattvataha tyakvag deham punar janma naiti mamitu sarjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, of Ar O Arjuna. One who understands Krishna and abides by his order is a candidate for returning home back to Godhead. It may be concluded that Dharma, religion, refers to that which is ordered in the Vedas, and Adharma, irreligion, refers to that which is not supported in the Vedas. Dharma is not actually manufactured by Narayan. As stated in the Vedas, Asya Mahato Bhutasya Nish Nishvisitam Etad Yadrig Veda Iti. The injunctions of Dharma emanate from the breathing of Narayan, the supreme living entity. Narayan exists eternally and breathes eternally, and therefore Dharma, the functions of Nar the injunctions of Narayana also exists eternally. Srila Madhvacharya, the original Acharya, for those who belong to the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya says, Vedaham Prana Pratama Vakta Hare Reva Yato Vibhu Ato Vishnu Atmaka Veda Itya Hor Veda Vadina. The transcendental words of the Vedas emanated from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Vedic principles should be understood to be Vaishnava principles because Vishnu is the origin of the Vedas. The Vedas contain nothing besides the instructions of Vishnu, and one who follows the Vedic principles is a Vaishnava. The Vaishnava is not a member of a manufactured community of this material world. A Vaishnava is a real knower of the Vedas, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Vedascha sarver aham eva vedya. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishnam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Parakmalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sita Devi Prinamami Hare Priya Vancha Kalpatri Bhishcha Kripa Sundib Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishna Bio Namona Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadar Hara Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vinam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukam Karuti Vachalam Pangam Langaiti Ginam Yarki Patam Maham Vande Giram Dinataranam Hare Krishna So it's the month of Kartik and we're getting a chance to listen from Srimad Bhagavatam. Now I'd like to share a quick uh, book distribution story before I proceed. <coughs> I was at Balbo Park and I was showing these three people our books and they were they were young there were three young they were from uh, Riverside and I forgot their uh, occupation but they took interest in the sets and then they took interest in the Bhagavad Gita but the lady the girl she said what's this book and she pointed to the Krishna book she said this looks familiar so I was showing her the pictures and the pastimes of Krishna and when we came to 
you know, Mother Yashoda chasing Krishna and binding Krishna. She said, I know this, I remember this. And I said, where are you from? Because you know, you don't know the people's backgrounds, you know, the people that you meet. I thought she was from India, but she was from Mexico. So I said, how do you know this Krishna book? And she said, my grandmother, she used to have this book and she showed it to me. And she said, I still remember this when I was a little girl. So it, it was very sweet to know that, you know, people, they can remember Krishna. Of course, Krishna is in the heart as a Paramatma. And I gave her the, the Krishna book and then her other friend, he said, I'm going to get one too. So they took a set of um, the sets that we have. Both of them took Bhagavad Gita and a Krishna book. So uh, when we go on book distribution, it's, it is a risk. You have to, you know, like Lord Nityananda, you have to approach the Jaw guys and, um, and <laughs> you know, some of them are not interested, but if you present the books nicely, if, they, if we present the books nicely, they're, they're willing to take like yesterday, where I was setting up, it was kind of slow because due to the weather. So uh, Dimitri, Bhakti Dimitri, he said, he said, is it slow there too? You know, and he said, 99% of the people are saying no. So I said, you know, if we're going to fail, let's fail together. Okay. So I, I grabbed my stuff and I moved next to him, you know, and we we're just having fun. And um, so yeah, the book distributors, we take risks, we go out, you know, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've been attacked, or you can say verbally abused in a book distribution. And yesterday, there was this uh, lady, she was nice, you know, but she said, you know, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that you give up this yoga and go to heaven. <laughs> so I just said, you know, thank you. I appreciate what um, your concern for me. So, and a lot of people sometimes they are very ill-behaved, meaning they'll, you know, cut you off and then say you're going to hell, this and that. So you just got to tolerate and ignore them. And so here, Srila Prabhupada is explaining the process of receiving knowledge, right? One must hear from authorized sources. Shushruma, we have heard. There's a game, I'm not sure if you guys have played, it's called Chinese Whispers or Chinese Telephone. Okay, there's a, you know, we used to play this as little kids. A group, they would line up in a row or in a line or a circle. So the first person whispers something in the second person's ear. And the second person repeats that. And then by the time it reaches to the last person, that person has to announce what was the message, right? I'll give you an example. The first person says, Krishna is a supreme personality of Godhead. And by the time it reaches to the last person, it turns into, I am the Supreme Personality of God. So this, you know, so uh, messages, it can be distorted, it can be changed. And so the, the objective is to compare the original and the final messages. And I remember uh, I was kind of bad, you know. When it came to me, I would change up the message on purpose. So uh, it never made it uh, with the original message. So it shows how easily information can be corrupted. And I had this experience of this. My spiritual master, His Holiness, Badri Narayan Swami Maharaj, he tells me, when you see Tyler, tell him this, this, this. I said, yes, Maharaj. So when I see, I go out on books, I said, and I can't see Tyler. So. I give this message to another person. And then the next day, Maharaj tells me, did you tell Tyler? And I said, no, I told so-and-so. <laughs> he would chastise me, you know. He, says, he said, this is not the process. You have to go directly to the person. Just like when you want to give, you know, prasadam to, you know, your a friend, you give it to him directly. If you give it to another devotee, you don't know where that place is going to be, right? Because prasadam... You know, Maharaj, he said, there's two types of devotees. One that cooks prasadam and one that steals prasadam. <laughs> and both of them are transcendental. So we need to approach, you can say, authorized persons or the person directly. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, evam param para praptam emam rajarsayam vidu sakale kale neha mahata yoga 
nashta param tapa. This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in this way. But in due course of time the succession was broken, and therefore the science as it appears to be lost. And when you go on book distribution, you meet a lot of people from different parts of the globe. And one of the most difficult ones are the ones from India. Why? Because when you, as soon as they see Bhagavad Gita, they turn away, right? They say, I know Bhagavad Gita. So I tell them, what about this Krishna book? No, my grandmother told me stories of Krishna. What about Srimad Bhagavatam? No, no, no. You know, I have the original, right? So they'll think of so many different ways, excuses not to get a book from you. But when you ask them, have you read the book? 90% of them, they say no. I say, what is the use, you know? So there are four bona fide sampradayas. Can anyone tell me one of the fours? Rudra sampradaya, which is Lord Shiva. Shri sampradaya, which is Lakshmi. Brahma sampradaya, and? The four Kumaras. So these are the four lineages that are considered bona fide. And if you don't get information from these four sampradayas, your knowledge may be distorted. And so someone asked me on book distribution yesterday, how do you know this is the original? So I go to the introduction, I show him the disciplic succession. I tell him this is... If, so I tell him this Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Lord Krishna himself. He gave this knowledge to the first created being, Lord Brahma, and then Brahma gave it to his son Narada, and Narada gave it to Vyasa like that. And that told me it reaches all the way down, and I point at Srila Prabhupada. I say, and then it reaches down to uh, our, spirit, our recent spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And they actually, they like that. They know that, you know, this is bona fide, and they appreciate it. And they know that there's authority behind this book. And so, human beings can understand morality, what is right and what is wrong. Just like a jawmill, he completely forgot what was dharma. <laughs> as soon as he saw the shudra kopal in the forest, it sparked this lust inside his heart. And no matter what he did, jnana failed him, right? He was trying to think of knowledge, he was trying to think of uh, instructions, but still he fell down. And so, human beings, we know what is right from wrong, but animals can't. And there's an example. If an animal takes your possession, he's not punished, right? You don't take this to the Supreme Court. You don't say, this bear, this bear stole my laptop. You, know, you, don't, you don't do that. But if a person steals your laptop, then you have a case behind it. So state laws are being are meant for human beings. Veda, Pranihito, Dharma. The Vedas constitute Dharma. And why do we accept the Vedas, right? Vedas are coming from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then what I like about it is that it's very precise. We don't need to go out and do endeavor for research. It says there are 8,400,000 species of life. 400, 8,400,000, thank you. And so, and actually we don't, we can't confirm how many life forms there are. We don't have the proper tools or, or instruments. And I did a research, you know, in the ocean, we haven't even reached the, the deepest ends yet. It says that most of the waters remain unexplored, uncharted, and, and unseen by our eyes. It might be shocking to find out, but only 5% of the ocean has been explored and charted by humans. Isn't that amazing? But the Vedas, they describe how many different forms are there in the ocean, in the plant species, animals, uh, two-legged animals, and the human beings, and so on. And the Vedas, so we accept them. And the Vedas, they say that stool is very unclean, it's impure. Right? And as soon as you touch stool, you have to take a bath. But the Vedas, they say that cow dung is very pure. And they did a research on it. It has full antiseptic properties. And the Vedas, they already knew this since time immemorial. But modern science or, you know, 
Now they're just concluded that it is true. So similarly, bones of animals are also impure, right? You have to take a bath, but people are shoving bones in their mouth, you know, meat eaters. <laughs> but still, they don't want to brush their teeth, you know. So, why is the conch shell used on the altar? Because the Vedas say that the conch shell is pure. Although its bone is pure because the Vedas say so. And the revealed scriptures say that there are laws of karma, laws of material nature, laws of transmigration of the soul from one body to another, and then there is the lawmaker, Krishna. Right? People want to study laws of physics, laws of gravity, this and that, but they don't want to find out who is that person that made that law. And so we don't need to go on an endless research of speculation. We save time. And so we have to hear from authority. And Srila Prabhupada, he said something that I'll always remember. He says that we may not be perfect, but if we hear from the perfect source, then our knowledge is perfect. For example, a little child may say, my dear father, what is this? He doesn't know, he has no idea. But if the father is a gentleman and he has no... Uh, he doesn't have any purpose to lie to the child, he'll say, my dear son, this is a table. So if the son repeats this over and over to his friends, then his knowledge is perfect, although he's imperfect. So Srila Prabhupada, he would always stress, be careful with whom who we hear from, right? In the internet, there's so many different conspiracy theories, there's so many different ideas out there, right? And a lot of people, they get stuck, they get sucked into that whole uh, conspiracy theories. And Srila Prabhupada also uses this example. If you have a case and you want, to pre you want to defend yourself in a court of law, you have to quote from law books, right? In section 8 in the Constitution, I have this right and this right. So then your argument has more uh, value. So similarly, when we present philosophy or any major argument, we have to quote Shastra, the scripture. And Srila Prabhupada, he didn't like the words, I think, I believe, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, when I go on book distribution, I ask, to, I ask questions like, what is the purpose of life? And as soon as they say, I think, I believe, I tell them, oh, he's just speculating. And I tell them, where did you get this knowledge from? And it's all from my own mind, right? From my own experience. But Srila Prabhupada, he would always point out there are four defects in human beings. We have imperfect senses. We make mistakes. We're prone to be illusioned. And we have the tendency to cheat. Everywhere you see this. We have imperfect senses, right? Our eyes cannot see what's behind this wall. We can't hear what's in the kitchen, right? Hey, Dimitri, what are you making for breakfast? Just kidding. So, and our senses are, imper our senses are imperfect, so we can't find uh, perfect knowledge through these senses, and we make mistakes. How many of us know what we did yesterday at 4.30 p.m.? You guys know? You're at the beach, but what were you doing? Okay, so a lot of us, we could hardly remember what we did even last week. So we make mistakes and we are illusioned. We may mistake a rope for a snake. We may hear, you know, things like that. And so, and also we have a tendency to cheat. There's so many philosophers, you know, life coaches out there. You know, when I was working at a... Assisted living, we would read Dear Abby to the residents, you know, because they, they like to hear advice. But Abby herself was divorced, I think, like three times. And she's giving advice to people about marriage. <laughs> so, tendency to cheat. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't need to read books, you know, I can become my own spiritual master. But even in the mundane or material knowledge, if we want to learn math, we have to approach a teacher. We can't learn math on our own. So similarly, when we want to learn uh, transcendental science, we have to go to a spiritual master. And so without going to a spiritual master, it's not possible to learn Krishna consciousness. 
So therefore, in our Vaishnava principles, it is said, Adau Guru Ashrayam. In the very beginning of understanding the spiritual knowledge, one has to take shelter of a guru. Adau Guru Ashrayam. And then, Sad Dharma Priyachate. The next stage is inquiring from the spiritual master about real spiritual life. So this is the process. You approach someone that is bona fide, someone that knows the scriptures, that lives the script scriptures, and they want to spread, or uh, you can say dedicate their life and spread in Krishna consciousness. And then you render service to this person, sevaya. But not in a challenging way, right? See, a lot of aspiring disciples, they want to challenge the guru sometimes. You know, how much do you know? You know, they want to, like what Bhakti Tyler says, flex on them. Flex on them, you know, yeah. <laughs> So we have to learn and we have to inquire and we have to, you can say, in a very humble mood, render service. You know, Jamil, by his activities, the Yamadutas knew, or they thought he was going to hell, right? So it says that a man is destined to go to heaven or hell by his activities. And you can see also whether a man will be punished or rewarded in this material world. They say a, a student, a young student, he's, he's studying very hard. So you know that his future is bright. He's taking his studies very seriously. But another boy, he's lazy. He doesn't want to study and he parties all day and all night. So then that means that his future is not very bright. My spiritual master, he says, parents, if they don't, tell their children to go to school and they don't make them brush their teeth, by the, by the time they're 30, they end up as toothless idiots. <laughs> right? You don't brush your teeth, your teeth are going to fall out, you're going to have uh, teeth problems. And then if you don't go to school, you're an idiot, right? You don't know anything. But, so you can understand the destination of a certain person. So this life is a preparation for the next life. Someone who practices Krishna consciousness, we know where they're going. Someone who is wandering through life, we know where they're going. Someone who behaves and lives like an animal, they, we know where they're going. And a materialistic person, we know where they're going. So there's different destinations. A Krishna consciousness person, he goes to Krishna. He goes back home, back to Godhead. Someone who's wandering is like Ashwatthama. He was cursed to travel all around the different universes by himself, alone. And then someone who is simply just eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, they take birth in the animal kingdom. And a materialistic person thinks, I still have a lot to do. I still have work to, uh, to accomplish. So he takes birth in, uh, in earth again to complete his so-called uh, endeavors. So I want to tell a little story. You know, donkeys, you have to put a carrier in front of them for them to move, right? So there was a, a donkey, he was eating grass, and he saw another donkey with a heavy load on his back of clothes. So the one that was free said, hey, what are you doing? You, you know, he said, oh, I'm carrying this for my, for my boss, my master. So why are you, why are you carrying so much diff, uh, loads on your back? He said, you know, I'll tell you why. So his master, the man, he had a daughter, and the daughter did something foolish. So the father said, if you make this mistake again, I'll marry you to this donkey. So this donkey, he was hoping, you know, one day the daughter is going to make a mistake and I'm going to get to marry her. So similarly, Maya, she puts these different lure, uh, allurements in front of us, right? In the, in the form of a beautiful woman, in the form of a, a nice career, in the form of this and that. So we're just hoping and hoping that we'll be happy. But like that donkey, does he know any better? <laughs> so the Lord's illusory energy is so strong that a pig finds pleasure in filthy places, you know. Human beings, we don't roll around in, in urine and stool and we don't consider that to be happy. So similarly, those in the lower modes of nature, their happiness is different from someone in the mode of goodness.
So I was out on book distribution. And someone asked me, you know, a lot, sometimes people have a little knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. I took world religions or religious studies. So one person asked me, why did Krishna induce Arjuna to fight? Aren't you supposed to be non-violence? So there's a misconception of this. And I tell him that actually Krishna tried so many times to stop the war. He was a peace messenger. He even asked Duridhan, please give him five small lands, you know, because they're Chatriyas. They need to rule, or that's their nature, or that's their um, Varnashram Dharma. But Duridhan, he was so envious of the Pandavas, he said, I will not even give them a land to put a pin in. <laughs> <laughs> a small little pin. So this is considered dharma and adharma, or good and evil. And actually, Duridhan, imagine him being our president, right? In the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Anya cha bhava surya, shura, mad artit hyakva jivitaha. He said, there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. You know, Duridhan, he didn't care. He was just happy that people are willing to fight for him. He didn't care about their welfare. And even in the Ramayan, right? Ravana, he knew that his brother Kumbhakarna, he was cursed. If he was to be woken up timely, untimely, his death was assured. But he still woke up his brother. He said, please fight for me, fight Ram. So even though he knew that his brother was going to die, he still woke him up. And it reminded me of this story. There was a king in the Arabian countries, and he wanted to see how the capital punishment or the criminals were executed. And at that time, there were no criminals. So what did the king say? He said, take one of my men and kill him. So <laughs> you don't want to be his... Uh, his uh, boss, you know, or you don't want to be the servant of this man. So similarly, Duridhan, he didn't care about others just except for himself. I was distributing books in La Jolla, and like I was mentioning, you know, you meet different people. And I was at uh, La Jolla, and there was this family from India. And the man, he gave me such a hard time. He said, oh, don't show this to me. You know, I know Bhagavad Gita. So I said, what's your favorite shloka? And he said, I know what it is, you know. So I told him, and he also told me, I heard this from my grandmother, right? You know what I told him? I told him that the, the essence of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sarva Dharman Paritya Jamam Ekam Sharanam Vrajam Aham Tvam Sarva Parpebhyo Moksha Yashami Mashu Chaham. So I told him just to surrender to Krishna. And he said, yeah, that's what we're doing. And I said, perfect. Tell your son to join the ashram, you know, to become a brahmachari. <laughs> he said, no, 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 we have to go. And he left. <laughs> so, you know, people, they say, I know the Bhagavad Gita, I know this and that. But when, it's, when it comes to practicing the philosophy, they don't, they don't want to do it. And then Krishna, he says, give up your other so-called duties. Because a lot of people, they're duty-bound, you know. I'm a father, I have to do this. We're not, we're not saying that's wrong, but also dovetail in Krishna's service. So Srila Prabhupada, he took the trouble, the inconvenience, the hardship of coming to the West. In the West, most people, we didn't know about Krishna consciousness. We didn't know the Vedas. We didn't know Eastern culture, you know. We didn't know what was cleanliness. <laughs> And so how can we repay someone who has given us such a priceless jewel, right? We have to remember what we have here. Why are we here in the temple? Why did we join the Krishna consciousness movement? Why did we take initiation? It's to prepare us uh, to go back home, back to Godhead. Not only that, but to also give this precious jewel to others. I'll tell, I'm almost done. So, I started asking this question in book distribution. Why are there so many unhappy people in the world? And would people tell me, you know, lack of proper education, the government? And I just smile, and they said, why do you think that is? And I, I, get a, I get a set of books. I said, because I haven't read these books yet, you know. 
<laughs> so they say, what are these books about? So I tell them it helps you to find inner happiness and inner peace, uh, purpose in life. Not only that, but you can help others. You can make a difference. And it's nice to see families walking away with the book set, and they're still talking about the conversation. You know, I knew karma was real. So things like that. And I was trying to stop this uh, lady yesterday. I said, excuse me, do you work here? And she said, I don't have time to stop. But she has time to get coffee. <laughs> she, has, she has time to get coffee, walk back, you know. So I said, okay. But everyone has free will. We can't force that. And I asked people also, have you heard of stress? There was this, there was this lady, she said, we're on vacation, we're good for now. <laughs> so what does that mean, right? After vacation, they're full of stress again. It was like that. And so I came here when I was four years old, and I didn't learn Tagalog, which is the, di the main dialect in the Philippines. So I met, when, I met people, when I meet people from the Philippines, I always ask them, do you know Ilocano? It's the dialect that I uh, speak or I understand. And yesterday, there was a family that actually understood. I said, really? I'm from the Philippines. And they were also from the same county or, or city where I was in. So I was talking to them in my, in my broken Ilocano. <laughs> so actually, when I tell them from the Philippines, they come back because they think I'm, you know, people say I look like I'm from Nepal. I'm from Mexico, <laughs> different people. And so when they learned I'm from the Philippines, they came back. And so when I was telling them that I'm a monk, I'm trying to become a monk, we're sharing books on mental health and how to be free from stress and anxiety. They didn't even care what I was saying. They just, they just wanted to get a book from me. And then I gave them a, a garland. I gave them flowers that were offered from, uh, from Tardides. And then right before they, they left, they said, can we take a picture with you? And I said, sure. So they took a picture with me, and they said, you know, we never met a Filipino that's practicing this, but you look very happy. And I told them, I am very happy, because I want to see you happy. And I told them, I always tell people, you're going to love these books, you just haven't read them yet. Right. So I told them, please give these books a chance. And so... I want to conclude that we have to hear from the right sources. The Yamadutas, they knew that Yamaraj, he was one of the 12 Mahajans, but their mistake was they thought there was no one above Yamaraj. And then, so the conversation between the Yamadutas and the Vishnadutas are going to continue, and it's, it's going to get sweeter and sweeter. Okay, that's all. Any questions, comments, corrections? Yes, Dharma, uh, I have one correction. Yes. But it's not correcting you, it's correcting me. <laughs> I want to apologize for yesterday for making that statement about Janaka because um, I should have researched it first. I did research it and I found many statements, especially by Prabhupada, saying that Janaka Maharaj, father of Sita, is one of the Mahajans. And I did some research. Yeah, I had no idea he was such a, a wonderful king and a devotee at the same time. He was very exemplary and so forth. So he's indeed that Maharaj. Uh, the other, th the, uh, the uh, Mahajan. But the other thing that reminded me, and this, this is a, a, a Sankirtan story. But it's, I, I, I don't know if you've heard this one yet. It's not about me. It's about Damodar Kumar. When you were talking about how you know you found some, someone uh, who was also Filipino and like that. So uh, Damodar Kumar used to be pretty much our Sankatan party. You know, for years he would go out and he would do nicely. And you know, he had a career here. So one day, Dalai Lama came. The Dalai Lama came to San Diego. I don't, I, you know, I can't believe how old he is. I mean, I, I, when I grew up, the Dalai Lama was, good, you know, he's still going strong. I have no idea. It must be a hundred by now. So he came and he had a big program, and and there was there was some uh, event, you know. UCSD. UCSD. Okay, so he knows the story. And um, big crowd, you know. So Damodar Kumar set up a table, and he was going to get people all coming out, you know. And so there's a nice table with the books. And when people would come, they were crowding around his table. And what happened was, if you, if you think about it, he looks exactly like a Tibetan. 
<laughs> you know, and they all thought that he was with the Dalai Lama. Mm. So his books were flying off the table. He had to run back to the car get more books. Like <laughs> it was the best best day he ever had. Three hundred dollars, so many books, you know, and everything. It was a wonderful story. I knew you'd like that. You, had you heard it before? Mm -hmm. You did. I, I, I forgot about it. All right, but many devotees hadn't heard that. I couldn't have probably never heard it before. So when you see him, you can remind him of that. He'll, he'll give you a big laugh, big hug, maybe. Who knows? Thank you. There's a lot of people that we meet. They they are interested in the books, but somehow or other, they are hesitant to take it. Whether it's you know their partners tell them you know we're not going to read this, so it doesn't matter. We still have to go out and try, right? Every day is like an adventure for book distributors. You don't know what you're going to encounter. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know how much books are going to take. Sorry, one more. I was distributing books uh, the other day, and there was a man and uh, the father and the son. And I was explaining to them how the mind can become a friend, you know, in the form of depression, suicide, loneliness like that. He took out his glasses, you know, and he was staring at me like this. You know, and I was looking at him like, the mind can turn heaven into hell or hell, you know, and we, he didn't blink. And so he said, how much for the books? He didn't even let me finish my little pitch, you know. And that's some, you know, for a set, some people give $20, things like that. So he gave uh, $40. So I gave him two sets and I gave him two Bhagavad Gita's. And when he, when he was walking away, he gave the books to his son. And before he wasn't, I saw there was distance between the son and the father. But after getting the books and handing it to him, he hugged his son, you know, because I guess the son was, you know, going through some difficulties with the mind. So yeah, people need these books. We go out and shoot. Yes, Bhaktasal. That was a nice class, thank you. And he's 87, by the way. I'm sorry? He's 87. The Dalai Lama. Oh, okay. I just looked that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, so my question was, Jami saw these two, you know, Shudra and Shudra really embracing, and, you know, of just trying to see how can we apply it to, how do we get rid of, you know, and we see this, like, in, we don't see this exact thing in public, hopefully, <laughs> but if we see some... Yeah, <laughs> you see worse, and so how do you how do you cope with that? How do you get rid of you know such lusty desire sometimes so you don't stray away from the the path of bhakti? For me, I always remember that we've had different bodies in the past, and we once had a woman's body, you know. So if you're lusting over a woman, you're like you know I I was in that position before. So that, that's for me. But uh, Vijay Prabhu he said when he goes out on book distribution. He imagines them without the skin, you know. So it's, they're not really so attractive. But we should also know that, you know, you know, it's a sm it's a small temporary pleasure, you know, but the end result or the karma is is great. So we should always keep that in mind. But um, you just have to remember, you know, this is not. This is not actual happiness, to be attracted to this and, and that, things like that. The soul is naturally attracted to Krishna, so we keep that in mind. But if anyone else wants to uh, add... Yes, Vaikuntu. Thank you, soul. That was a nice question. I expected that was a great class. And uh, in... In relation to his question, too, just to add to what you already shared, I remember Bhadi Narayan Maharaj sometimes shared uh, some Sankirtan devotee that said, Sarup Maharaj, that, and, and he said, if, just remember that if you were a cow, she'd eat you, which I thought was a pretty good one, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, that was just another one. And then uh, I also had a, also Guna Grai Maharaj used to say, which I also found quite helpful, <clears throat> is that when you see a beautiful person, you know, just think about how if they became a devotee, they could be offering, you know, th that beauty for Krishna's pleasure, right? Like Prabhupada named the deities in Paris, Radha Parish Ishvara, and sometimes the joke was Krishna's come to get some French gopis, right? So <laughs> we can actually see that everything nice should be offered to the Lord, you know, and it's actually a very purifying mentality when you're trying to preach, and instead of thinking, for me, you just think, oh, for Krishna, you know, and it's it's kind of takes that edge off. So then I also had a uh, 
a question. Um, it was an interesting update on the uh, on the donkey analogy. You know, we we always had the one where the carrot was you know one one more step, and I get the carrot. It was, it was suspended there. So, did you come up with this new update? No, um, I liked it. I heard it in a class, and I didn't want to get too much into it. But the one that was free, you know, he said they were asking, "What have you been up to?" So they said, "Oh, I'm just grazing around. You know, there's grass <laughs> everywhere. I don't need to work." And so I said, "What about you?" And that's when he told me the story. Mm. I'm doing this hard work because one day I'm hoping I can marry the the washerwoman's daughter. <laughs> it, 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 it's a good update. I like it. I like it. Thank you. But I, I heard it in the class from a devotee. That's right. Yeah, it, was, it, it, it was quite nice. Yeah. Lastly, for me anyway, um, and I don't mean to contradict you at all, I'm 65, and I was thinking about it as you were explaining it. Like, you know, I'm not like a big Doryodhan enthusiast, but when I think about the succession of presidents in my life, he might be a better choice. <laughs> Doryodhana, compared to most of the presidents in my lifetime, like uh, you know, I was trying to think about them individually. I mean, like maybe George Washington, but like I, I, I don't know a whole lot of history, but mm -hmm. the succession of these guys in my life, at least Doryodhana knew a few things about Varnashram Dharma, and he was the first in the battle. He was actually out there on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just sending a bunch of guys out there, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just a thought. Yeah, thank you. But um, you know. I remember when I was reading Prabhupada's books and, you know, different quotes from him. He said, democracy is a shortcut for demon crazy, you know, the government like that. So I, I always thought about that. Yeah, it's Kali Yuga, you know, there's no one following uh, the principles, things like that. So yeah, maybe Duridhan was, was, might have been a better president. But yeah. So you had something else? This question about this Varnashram Dharma, it, it is, are we placing our, our Varnashram due to our karma? Mm. This, 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 I heard it in the class, but I can elaborate more later. But I don't sense. know the, the verse, I think it starts with Chattur or something, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's your karma and your uh, guna, nature and your karma, that determines your your work and your nature that determines which ashram you're in. But actually, Srila Prabhupada says that the Vaishnavas were above the, the Varnashram Dharma system. So just stay as a devotee soul. And then you don't have to worry about what well, ashram you <laughs> Yeah. Just, just one comment. Uh, I think the Many of you are aware of something called a prison ministry. Right. So uh, I gave a small donation some years ago, and they keep sending me newsletter and stuff, you know. So back uh, a few months ago, I got a uh, a book in the mail. They sent me that book, that recent book that was written by Chandra Mali Swami, who's been working them f for years, and it's called Forbidden Voices. And 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 I'm going to lend it to you and anyone else who wants to. I've been reading it, and the the. Uh, the stories in there. Most of the st there's a lot of stories from the from the prisoners themselves about how they turn to Krishna consciousness. Of course, they're in the prison, you know, and and somehow they hear about the prison ministry. They write letters. There's a lot of uh, 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 correspondence, and then they get books, and they describe how these these books were like so transformative in their lives, you know. And and here you have people who are under tremendous distress, you know, in in uh, stress in the in the environment of the prison, and it just Practically, someone's thinking of suicide, and you know it's just so horrible. But the but the books, and of course, the mantra they start chanting. The the, the uh, I, those who are distributing books and who are you know reading the books, just to, to hear or to read about how these are like just life saving words. You know, they said finally I finally found something. You know that I could read, and many of them have been searching here and there. But they get that into drugs and this and that. They perform. They get, did some crime. You know, when they were drunk, and now they're in jail all their life. But it's uh, it's 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 inspiring because you already know how transformative the, the books are. 
and pe you know people are picking up on that and taking it, and to read how th this in this extreme situation they just so, and they really become serious devotees. Some get initiated. They do artwork and po poetry. You know, mm -hmm. it's just very inspiring. And I thought you would probably appreciate the book. Any other devotees? It's all lended to you. See, and then we'll start hearing stories from the books in your classes. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> which you. is great. And one thing I'd like to add is when I give them the books, I always tell them these are life-changing books. You know, tell them these changed my life. Yes, Balram. Yeah, um, about Saul's first question. Uh, yeah, one devotee was mentioning to me that in many ways to live in the West and practice Krishna consciousness is is much more difficult. Actually, in, in many ways, it is more difficult than living in a more conducive place, like like certain places in India, for example. Maybe more conducive for at least what is it, renunciates. <laughs> uh, so, but this devotee was mentioning to me that living in the West for brahmacharis, for specifically, because you know. Or just any devotee, actually, um, it requires that they that they uh, exert a lot of energy, or they they intensify their practice, um, and that's what the Bhagavatam says: the kamo sava kamo va moksha kamo dadadi. That ti vrena bhakti yogena to intensely engage in the process of devotional service, uh, whatever our desires may be. And here we're talking about material desires. Um, with the idea that uh, they'll become purified. So, so yeah, living in the wet, that, that's, that's required to be very intense in the practice, or else you're just going to, or else a person's just going to sink into illusion. Um, so, so yeah, that's an, that's an important uh, thing. And also it's like to focus on the negative I mean, it only goes so far, you know, to think about, oh, the nature of the body or whatever it is, it only goes so far. <laughs> I mean, um, but ultimately, we have to develop a, a, we have to develop a higher taste, right? We have to develop a higher taste, and therefore we have the morning program, right? Attend the morning program, attend the morning program, attend the morning program. It's because that gives, you know, also evening program, that gives strength. Also all the classes, why are we having all these classes? It's to strengthen the intelligence to be able to control. Or else, how, how, will, we, how will we control? There's no possible way of doing it without, that's why so many classes. Prabhupada said, if devotees don't become learned, they don't become they don't, they don't attend the classes, they don't read, they don't hear, then they'll think, oh, why am I performing this austerity? You know, what, what's the big deal? You know, I'm here, in, I'm here in San Diego, why don't I just join the Kali Yuga Circus, right? Come on, go out and enjoy. Um, but if we strengthen our intelligence, then you think, no, this is, this, there might, you might have some lingering attraction, but you think, no, this is useless, well, I'm not gonna, you know. So, anyways, I don't mean to, I'm going to stop there because I'm not going to give a whole nother. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Vijay Krishna. Uh, uh, may I? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, um, uh, Govartan Prabhu, uh, thank you very much. You're very kind. Dandabhat Pranam Prabhu. The, the, uh, you, you chose for today text 40, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so uh, in the translation to text uh, 40, I find that there is no difference between the, the Vedas um, and, uh, and God, uh, Narayan, and that uh, the Vedas are the same as uh, the religious principles. So based on this, my, my question is, uh, what is a religious uh, person? Uh, is it that without reading and studying the Vedas, a person will never be recognized as religious? So, Srila Prabhupada would always say that real dharma, real religion is sarva dharma and parichaja. So give up all religious or so-called dharmas and just surrender to Krishna. So, and it also says that the purpose of the Vedas, studying the Vedas, is to know Krishna. 
So that's the real purpose of studying the Vedas. And eventually, you'll be, you'll turn into a Hare Krishna devotee. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vijay, I hope that answered you. No, 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 Prabhu, yes. Uh, I liked it when you said that studying the Vedas, it is the same as to, uh, to understand Krishna. Just mm -hmm. wonderful, Pra Prabhu. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. You're welcome. Thank you, Vijay. Grand Trash. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One, one comment. Yes. Please, we have to remember please. that the uh, the Yamadutas don't have it right. In other words, it, it, it's not just the Vedas, you know, the four Vedas. You have to come to the conclusion of the Vedas, the, the Bhagavatam. And the Bhagavatam at the beginning, you know, kicks out all, you know, other dharmas. And also uh, Yasudev, he's saying to, to uh, Narada. Narada Muni, Excuse me, now in Muni is saying to Vyasadev, Nayat Vichas Chitta Badang Hare Show. And there's so much in the Vedas that don't directly glorify Krishna and don't really give, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there that we don't need to study. And that, that, that is just a pilgrimage of crows. You know, he's speaking very, very strongly. So the, the, the Yamadudas are mistaken. It's not that what they're saying is completely off, but they're not going far enough about you know what the essence of the Vedas is and the, and the holy name and all of these things. So so there's you can't just follow this one verse and say okay yes you know it's not it's, uh, if you if you study the Vedas then you're going to be religious. You have to have the, you have the essence of it and, and you have to have a spirit. A, a and and, and, and Prabhu, what is the essence? Shri Bhagavatam. This is the ripened fruit of all the Vedic literature. Exactly. Uh, yes. Exactly. And, and drink the Bhagavatam. Become a rasika. You know, become a rasika. And that, the drinking that nectar, that will obviate all your attraction for this, you know, material world. And, and that will make me a real religious uh, person. Exactly. Hare okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Uh, just Krishna. amazing, again, breathtaking. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.